whether it translates into, you know, working or, or moving on to some residential uh, supported housing situation, she's got that experience as part of her being. It, it, it doesn't disappear because... Um, and that's why people like that changed. live in the community yeah. now. They used yeah. to live in Mansfield Training School and, and never a, be seen again. That's another concern about this bill, as I was thinking about it, is I remember the, the, the mindset was supposed to be to reintroduce people to the community, to stop isolating, to stop um, institutionalizing individuals. And now I'm not talking about this last caller. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. back more on my, with the mental health and I'm concerned when you, when you combine all these agencies, some of these agencies, in my perception, are rather institutional, um, or as I had said earlier, paternalistic. And I don't know that their, their mission statement would read independence and, <laughs> and you know... I think the mission statement. Self determination of their clientele. <laughs> I, I think the mission statements probably do, but but you're right that they all have have uh, they've they've all come from institutional backgrounds, and some of them have left them farther behind than others, mm -hmm. um, and and that's certainly a consideration. I think that everybody, most people in all of these agencies, want to do something good for their clients. Uh, I don't, I'm not, you know, just because I know more about one group and like one group uh, doesn't mean I'm, I'm bad-mouthing the others. Right. Uh, I think they all want to do the right thing. They may have different ideas than I do about what the right thing is, but I think with all of them, there's, uh, uh, there's a, a competition within the agency between traditionalists who take a more paternalistic view and more progressive people who are more focused on independence. Pardon my allergies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and, and it, it, the balance in that competition, uh, you know, who's winning may be different in different cases. Who's uh, going to be the, the voice for these different cultures in the capital? Because you really, you can't spend the precious dollars in a nonprofit where your grants and funding has already been cut on lobbying for your individuality. Well, you, it's hard. In, I mean, right now you have to lobby for a particular kind of program. But you're right. It's going to take everything back a, a, a stage. It may be that, that the division of this or the division of that will still have a fair amount of autonomy and most things won't change. But I presume that at the top, the division director for mental health and the division director for children and families and the division director, whatever they're going to be called, uh, for, for uh, uh, developmental disabilities and public health and all those other things will, will be competing with each other. I worry that uh, the, the, the eligibility services group in what is now the Department of Social Services, because they're, they have the largest budget and, the, mm -hmm. and a large staff, I worry that they will dominate the new group. And their needs are very different than the right. more client. Or, I mean, just the, look at the size of the caseloads in the different agencies. Right. If, right. We, if we move to a system in which larger caseloads are the norm because we do less for each person, then we're going to do less for each person and the people in Connecticut. And there's certainly a discrepancy have. between um, state agencies, services, and nonprofits in that you're, you're really requiring more uh, cooperative behavior between groups that receive different pay scales, receive different benefit packages. You're not going to have state insurance just because they combined everybody into mm -hmm. one group. You're still a nonprofit, you know, and maybe you don't even have, you know, health insurance or, or whatever. That's certainly true, uh, but we, I mean, we're living with that now. But not well. I'm anticipating not like you will be, <laughs> not well, like you will be. That may be. We have another call. Okay. Good evening. You're on Street Talk. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to take the um, more positive attributes of this particular discussion. Good, we welcome that. Go ahead. Uh, 
I, the reality is that the cost to Connecticut taxpayers is escalating tremendously, and I think anyone who is knowledgeable about the situation cannot see it ever decreasing. It's getting higher and higher and higher, and the reality is there are fewer and fewer of us that are paying the bills. And so I think we have to look at it objectively, not assume that the people who may uh, be consolidated, because I think, I mean, even, for example, as something which was not necessarily in the purview, although education is in the state purview, but I'm speaking just in locally, we're going to have to think more in the way of consolidated school systems, and, and the same goes for consolidation within state agencies. I don't speak from, you know, theoretical. I am a retired state employee. Uh, I worked in a department that saw many divisions, and you have to believe that those uh, individuals within the different departments ha still maintain their skills. They still are going to fight for their own particular clients. Uh, maybe it will make some who may become a little less enthusiastic, shall we say, um, begin to sit up a little more and work a little more for their particular part of the agency. But the reality is we have to consolidate, and we have to think in terms of how are we going to cut this budget so that all of these agencies continue to survive. There may be that the reality is we are going to have to cut back. But we are going to have to do that. Uh, uh, personally, I'm retired uh, myself for a number of years. I don't get a, uh, my Social Security isn't going up. It didn't go up this year. It's not going to go up possibly for at least, according to Senator Dodd, at least another three years. I have to, to make do. We all have to do, make do. And even though I loved my years in state service, I know that cutbacks can be made, and I know that the individuals that work in those agencies are dedicated. They don't be negative. Don't assume that, that you know, if there's consolidation, that people are not going to be as dedicated. They will be. Uh, people who work in this kinds of service are people who are innately very dedicated. So, and I have great strength and belief in, in state workers. So uh, and so I'm, I really feel that we're making a very positive step in this direction of consolidation rather than a negative one. So before, you know, everyone gets very upset about the fact that there, there are going to be agencies that are going to combine, I know this can work. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, <laughs> I hope you're right. Uh, I'm all in favor of saving money. I'm all in favor of efficiency. Well, it's not a question of saving money. It's a question of having to deal with the money that we have. Uh, it goes beyond just saving. We're not saving. We're trying to hold on with, 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 with the spiraling costs. So it's not a, we're not really trying to save. We're trying to hold on to the services that we have, maybe change them to some degree, uh, but that doesn't, doesn't mean that we're going to you know, the service is not going to be decreased. The, the, the uh, amount of money available may be decreased. I think one follows the other myself. I well, I, I don't know. How, I don't know how many, if you worked in state service, uh, I, 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 as I say, I had a long history in state service, and I worked in an agency which had many different parts. And I, and I, I, do, I don't see them, any of them, ever working against one another. Uh, well, we had a particular job, another agency had a particular job, and, and we functioned very well with, with an with a, with a, uh, over, overall administrator uh, who appreciated the different uh, facilities. And I, I can't see that this is going to be any different. Uh, when it comes to social services, it's a very costly venture. And we can't continue, the money isn't going to continue to come. That's the first thing we have to realize. Yeah. Money is not going to continue to grow in the state. But how? And so we have to learn to live with what we have. And how is this proposal going to save money or, or keep the budget from growing? 
Well, I'm assuming that 